Hey everybody and welcome to Cut Transform Glue. On my regular trips to find new bits and pieces for my projects, I came across this broken Bluetooth speaker. It looked very uninteresting and not promising, but I figured why not take it apart and actually see what's inside. Maybe it could be like a grippy hunting video? I had no idea of what to expect and the only way to be sure was to just go for it. It had no obvious screws or tabs, so it took me a while to figure a way to get inside. Once I found a couple of screws, I started making some progress. And of course, some brute force was also very helpful. It had a lot of screws holding everything together, much more than I was expecting to be honest, but eventually I was able to take everything apart. And while there wasn't much to be found apart from the electronics which are not shown on the video, I started to see some potential on the shapes. For a long time I've been wanting to build a four-legged crab robot, where the main body shape would be like a tower, and this broken speaker shell looked perfect for that idea. At this point I wasn't sure of the function of the robot, that only came later in the process, so I was just going for the looks. This is not how I usually go about all my builds, but I figured it could be fun to change my method a little. And without a clear idea of what this bot does, I can only focus on the build challenges. I knew there was going to be a round body on the bottom of the tower, where later the legs would be attached, so I reinforced that spot with some thick acrylic shapes. On the top though, I wanted of course some cool detailed shapes, and for that I went with some custom 3D printed pieces and some good looking griblies, like the Kinder Surprise Egg. As I just said, there wasn't a lot inside of the speaker, but there were many opportunities and places where I could add new things, like I just did right there, using a printed piece that matched the three holes on a cool triangular pattern. Next, I trimmed part of the Kinder Hack, because I needed an empty space inside of the tower. I'll explain exactly why in a minute. Then I kinda got ahead of myself, grabbed some tiny detail pieces and glued them on the three spots on the top. The detailing phase is usually my last in my process, but I just couldn't resist. I could then glue the rest of the tower body and make all of that a single piece. There was a big empty spot where the buttons of the speaker were that I needed to take care. In my mind that was going to be the back of the robot, so I needed some air vents there. I made a custom piece that fitted the gap perfectly and then I combined it with some resin griblies that I actually made for my last project, the Science Traveler Sapo. You can spot them right there on the front of the truck. These resin pieces are part of a collection of shapes I'm slowly building over time, and patrons on the Combat Robot tier have access to many of these griblies. Now, here's why I needed some empty space inside of the body. Some of you might remember that I'm little by little trying to incorporate illumination in my builds. The LED candles I recently bought fitted almost perfectly on the openings where the speakers were, and that started to give me an idea of the function of this robot. I started to think something like a transmission tower or maybe something energy weapon related. Then I thought of an EMP unit and from there I went to a hacking robot. On this universe I'm slowly unit by unit building, most of it if not all of my builds are not tripulated. In my mind they are mostly remotely operated or AI powered. So this could be a unit designed to interfere with the robots on the battlefield and maybe hack them. I don't know, this is a crazy idea, but hey, this is why I'm here, to experiment and explore. Let me know what you think in the comments. For now, this will be a hacking tower robot, and if anything changes, I'll update you guys on the next episode. As you just saw, I made some custom pieces to be able to remove the candles and change the batteries when needed. Then I grabbed some roll-on deodorant balls and made a way to attach them on the top of the LEDs using some fake Lego pieces. You guys know me, I like to keep everything separated for the painting process.
Next, of course, would be the body of this robot. I just worked on the tower and I needed a cool shape to go with it, where of course, I'll attach the legs. I reached my collection of bigger round shapes and found a couple that worked super well with what I had. I made some changes to it, removing features that would interfere and make gluing everything a lot harder. Then I found the center of the piece and added some thick acrylic to reinforce everything. The blue shape was made of a plastic kinda immune to CA, so I had to use some hot glue to make sure everything stayed together. And I also added a thick acrylic disc on the top of everything where the tower would be sitting and as you can see there's a thick steel rod that makes the connection from the round body to the tower. The next build challenge, the legs. And for this project I knew that I wanted at least 4 of them, which means a lot of work. Well, I decided to take a shortcut actually, you guys will see that in a minute. Old subscribers know that I have this collection of what I call laser cut axle pieces. When I go to a public maker space around here, I usually cut a bunch of these to be able to quickly put together some legs, make some tests and things like that. So I used a combination of these laser cut acrylic shapes with some pieces that I made to test a particular length of flag segment. All of that to test ideas first and see what would work for my model. Now acrylic is super hard to work with, very resistant and robust, but an overall messy process that requires some heavier tools like the circular saw you just saw. Saw you just saw, that's kind of weird. But anyways, my point is, projects like this with four legs makes you consider some shortcuts and while I was working with the acrylic shapes, I kept in my mind that this was not going to be my final solution. Maybe someday I'll work out an acrylic leg prototyping system where I can pre-cut and simply assemble multiple leg segments, quickly changing its length. I don't know, this is a challenge for future me. And also, of course, I need my own laser cutting tool for projects like this, but this, this is for the future. I went back to the tower because I felt it needed some cool details, some character. And so I made some nice rounded corner air vents to install on what's the front of the robot. And that began to give it a badass look I was going for. Maybe later I'll attach those funny crab eyes to the sides, we'll see. And then I used the measurements from the acrylic test leg and printed, yes I 3D printed all four legs, call me a cheater. But don't worry, some cool grizzlies will come on top of all of this very soon. For now, this is all I have to show you, my hacking tower crab robot. Thank you so much for all my patrons and YouTube members for making all of this possible and as always, thanks for watching.